What's up guys, it's Ash and Nicole, and I'm here with Geek Plus Magazine, back with another episode of Mental Health. And joining us today, we have Dr. Stacey Alexander. How are you doing today? I'm excellent, what about you? I'm wonderful, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We are excited to talk about mental health, of course. Mm -hmm. Our audience is, of course, the entrepreneur and the artist, so let's just jump right into it. When it comes down to mental health and, of course, being stable and being, you know, that important key that you need, do you feel like that the business itself needs mental therapists or health professionals to help them get through the day or get through their business? The entrepreneurs? The entrepreneurs. Yes, yes. I do a full series on the emotionality of success. And basically what that's talking about is the things, the emotional, the cognitive stressors that are related or involved with owning a business, being creative, operating the business, handling personnel. Then we always talk about how to build a business. We talk about the financial side of it, personnel management, but very few people actually talk about the emotionality of being an entrepreneur. And as you can see, it is very emotional. <laughs> you do definitely get down sometimes. You may get, um, I won't say ill, but that's a part of the mental side of it. Mm -hmm. So how important would you suggest any mentor, any entrepreneur, any artist to seek any type of, even if you're not having issues, Right now, right. How important, how important would you say that is to for us to I say us mm -hmm. for us to seek those type of. Services. It's at the top of the list. My elevator mm -hmm. speech is: Do you have a primary care physician? Do you have a dentist? Do you have an optometrist? Some of us spend months looking for a barber when we move into a city, but rarely do we take the time to find a therapist. And it's just as much as important as other areas of our lives. We have accountants to handle our finances. Mm -hmm. We have the doctor, medical care. We go to the doctor when we're not sick because we go for our annual checks, yes. hopefully. Yes. We go to the dentist for our biannual checkups. We go get our eyes checked every year. Mm -hmm. Why are we not going to a counselor just as regularly as we go to these other providers? And would you, would you say that a mentor, um, whether in the industry of your field or just maybe on the accounting side or something like that, would you say that they are equipped to be your counselor or therapist? Or, would, or I mean, just how would you kind of tweak that if, if, if possible? So I'm going to pop it back. Would, your, would you allow your pastor to be, would you allow your mentor to pastor you? Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So it's a, it's a skill. It is something we're clinically trained. I know nowadays what I've kind of been talking to people about is we have made uh, counseling a contemporary model. And so some of the therapists that you're seeing, they laugh a lot, they talk a lot. But all that is is an effort to destigmatize coming to therapy. If you see me at parties, if you see me talking, if you see me walking around just like you are, you're more willing to come to me as a therapist than if I was this stoic person sitting behind a desk now, come talk to me, lay on my couch. Because that's the traditional perception of therapy that we have. Wow. So, no, I would not want my mentor to pastor me. My mentor may be a spiritual guide. My mentor may hold me accountable in the spiritual realm. But at the end of the day, I want my pastor to be my pastor. I want my mentor to be my mentor, and I want my counselor to be my counselor. And how would you, feel, how would you say the effectiveness of being counseled or having that mental health for the business, um, how effective is it? I mean, I'm, I'm not looking for any type of number or mm -hmm. any type of um, you know studies or anything like that, but when it definitely comes down to your personal um, business and what you guys have going, how effective do you think that it is? So, you know, I do own a counseling agency. I can put that out there. So I have to say that it's effective. But the feedback that I get from people, the reviews, yes. I really understand the capacity for what I'm doing. I had a lady come in, she wants me to supervise her. Hmm. And she was in tears about the work. She, she, she's read my profile over 20 years. She says, you don't do fluff counseling. Okay. I, I can see that you really get to the nitty gritty. I've, I've asked people, I've talked to people who have worked with you. You really get in there and help people deal with the issues that they're having. Okay. So when you get those counselors who will hold you accountable, who will challenge you to be a better person, Change only comes about with agitation, right? Okay. So if I agitate agitation. you a little bit, right? Aggressive. When you come in, <laughs> right? I don't have to be aggressive with it. I'm just letting you know that what you're doing is robbing you of your peace. Hmm. So then I become an effective counselor. If you leave the same way you came, I've been ineffective. I failed you. 
How many sessions? And that's amazing. Wow, I, I, I want to definitely just pause and say that was amazing. Or in this case, some good information that um, I think people don't really take the time out to, to even study to find out the effectiveness. Of right, it. right. So right. definitely. Um, when it comes down to you having the patients and you um, following up with them, how many sessions would you even recommend? Or does it go case by case basis? It is a case by case basis. So the way that I operate in my practice, I tell people that you're interviewing me mm -hmm. to see if you want to work with me. Mm -hmm. Do not feel held hostage just because you've gone to a counselor for that first session. I've had people come to me to say, oh, I was going to her for a year and I never grew. Why did you feel compelled to stay with somebody for a year and there was no growth. Just like you get to choose your barber, your accountant, oh, wow. your physician, your dentist, everybody. You get to choose your counselor. So I've never thought of it that way because in photography, um, I do definitely tell people that it's an intimacy that we sh that we exactly. would share exactly. when we're actually taking photos. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to get the moments that it does not look like, because I hate doing poses. Right. For those who have been my uh, clients in the past, I don't do poses. I like for you to feel comfortable. That's why I'm playing music all the time. And I'm mm -hmm. actually having you get into the groove mm -hmm. and the mood. Mm -hmm. So you can give me the best side of you and the moments that you're trying to create. So right. that definitely makes sense that you would say that you definitely have to be able to um, interview. Or in this case, um, I guess I would say feel that person to a depth of, I'm trusting you. There is some trust. You you need to have some trust when you're yes. working with people. Yes. Amazing. I definitely want people to reach out to you, or in this case, reach out to mm -hmm. any therapist or mm -hmm. counselor. So please go ahead and shout out your platform. Okay. So uh, you can find me at StaciaAlexander.com. The name of my agency is Positive Influences, so that's PositiveInfluences.org. I do have social media handles. Mostly they're at uh, Dr. Stacia Alexander. And yeah. <laughs> I am available I, because I, this is my livelihood. This is what I tell okay. people. I came out of high school with the intent of being a mental health professional. And I have had the privilege. It is a privilege. It's yes. a blessing. I yes. do not take it for granted. I've had the privilege of doing this for the last 20 years. In the last year, I was able to cross over into the educational sector mm -hmm. and I'm now working at an HBCU in Dallas, Paul Quinn, okay. working Shout with out. what I call emerging adults. That has been a really fantastic transition. I still have my private practice, but I'm also able to go on campus and help the emerging adults. And when it comes to those programs that people either seek you or you are, mm -hmm. are chosen from other uh, sectors of, of your business, mm -hmm. I mean, how important do they feel like it is for mental health? I mean, I, I know people maybe not elaborate right. a lot. I know they see mental health, they say, hey, we need, let's pull her in, let's pull that in. but. Do, does anybody ever, I guess I could ask that, does anybody ever bring in and say, hey, this is why we definitely need it? Are they detailed? Yes, so the college <laughs> was detailed. They had a vision of having a full mental health clinic for the students. So any student on campus can get those counseling services at no charge, and the alumni coming out of Paul Quinn oh, wow. can come in and get those sessions. So what I tell people is if you, if you believe your physical health is important, and you equate your mental health to that same level because like you said, if you get stressed, mm -hmm. you're going to fall physically ill over time. You may be able to handle it for a period of time, but how many ladies, like if you took a profile, how many of us get sick that are entrepreneurs? How many of us just end up in hospitals? Have you, did you notice last year how many men in their 40s died last year? Wow. That, that, that resonated with me. There's something going on that you have this many in our age group that are dying. And did they have a cause of this more like a mental or heart attack? It, well, no, it was heart attack or uh, aneurysms, things like that that are the result of stress. When you say stress, and just to elaborate a little bit about mm -hmm. um, the magazine and the purpose and the the artists being able to take their emotional side mm -hmm. of themselves to push out and be transparent, right? To make money to say, hey, I want to become an entrepreneur and take on this responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple, of a couple of artists that have said, I do not handle the business side. I only handle my talent. Right, my and creativity. I, my creativity. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can definitely take that mm -hmm. and understand it because of the fact that you do get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You do get mm -hmm. pulled back or, in this case, stressed. Mm -hmm. So what signs can we look for that would definitely say or hold that up uh, that I'm hey in I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm in trouble yeah lack of sleep okay your nutrition is totally off track 
you're snapping at people, you're not active enough, your activity is basically around whatever your creative outlet is. And I do want to caution uh, creative spirits, that's what I call them. Okay. You believe that your outlet is through your art. Mm -hmm. That is one version, that's one route that you can take okay. to release those thoughts and stressors that you're having. However, that's still an interpretation only through your vision. When you go to a counselor, it is my job to interpret that in another way that will bring peace to what you're struggling with. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Uh, some people may have to rewind that. I'm going to rewind it myself. <laughs> but that's okay because we're going to, she described it perfectly and I got it. But to just elaborate on that. I just, yes, and to elaborate more on it, just she'll, you can rewind it and get that part of it. Or in this mm -hmm. case, book a session mm -hmm. so that you can, or reach, reach out because that's, yes. that's the way that we're going to tackle this thing and handle it mm -hmm. on a more professional level. And I'm so excited and happy that even in 2019 that people are more aware. And you know, and something else I want to mention when you were asking me about how many sessions. So as entrepreneurs, what we do, we get into our world and we operate. We go head just full blast. When you're working for corporate America, they understand the impact of mental health. So most corporations, they will allow you five to six sessions a year at no charge See, that's for a counseling. That's a first. I've never heard of that. Oh, when you work, yeah, when you work for big corporations, it's called employee assistance program. You have a lot of services under there, yeah, financial services, physical, mental health. But one of the components is those counseling sessions annually at no charge. Wow. But when you move into the private sector, never heard of it. you don't have those sessions available to you at no charge. So what we've been able to do in my clinic, which is in Dallas County, if you come to our office in Dallas County, families that have children between zero and 17, we can give them those sessions at no charge. See, I've never, see, this is why we're having the series and the sessions with professionals that know the standards, that they know the, the everything that, they, that you would need as an entrepreneur, as an artist, because we don't know these services. We don't know. Right. So we appreciate that information so we can take advantage of those who would like to take advantage of those sessions and and definitely those triggers that she mm -hmm. announced earlier, the stressing, the non-sleeping, the snapping. That's, <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure we click that on and uh, we know some people that are snapping. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> they want to put that light on me. But I definitely want to make sure that the entrepreneurs do know that um, we're here for you guys. Not only on the creative side and of course with my other series that we have with D Plus that are definitely trying to make sure that they know about the financial side and everything else side, but we're worried about the health side as well, mm -hmm. whether physical or mental, that it's exciting um, to not only display your talents and you know who you are, but um, you can do them emotionally. Um, I, I, I want to say emotionally, but I can say emotionless without having the stress. Right. Am I saying that almost right? You, <laughs> can, you, can, you can manage the stress better. Yes, I, because people also there is good stress. Like your first kiss, it's stressful. It is. It's, <laughs> it, it's pleasurable, but it's still a stressor, and people don't recognize like your your business is thriving. Yeah. You're doing the series. That's a great stress, but it's still stress. And I guess you would say emotional when people think about the emotion side of being an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 look, look, mm -hmm. see. The <laughs> emotionality of success. And like you said, it's, see, now see, she's teaching me to say that. You said it's good stress. See, mm -hmm. I would have never thought mm -hmm. that there was good stress if I not had spoken with you about, you know, I'm thinking it's just an emotion of excitement. Emotion of excitement. Right. Su well, like she I'm said, happy. success. Yes. But it's an actual stress. So, guys, book your session. There's not a. There, and there's, I do. I do online sessions. So. There, there is not a, a question after this part that she's. There's really not because there's not a question about it. I know too many people that are entrepreneurs that are trying to strive and create new things and be innovative toward d different things that we're having in this in this world. And I always mm -hmm. tell people if there's not an avenue to create an avenue, mm -hmm. but that can be stressful. Mm -hmm. So if you're having those symptoms and everything like that, guys, there's not even a question anymore. You need to be contacting a professional or right. Dr. Stacy here as well to get you guys some help or in this case to talk. It's, it's okay to talk. Podcast. Yes. I was on a podcast. That was therapy. Mm -hmm. That was so much a release mm -hmm. every week to go in and talk about everything that was happening in the world along with you know scenarios that we would create. Right. right. So there's I don't think I don't feel like there's a difference mm -hmm. in so many ways, but 
Definitely. Shout out your, your, how can they reach you? How can they reach you, please? So the, my website is uh, StaciaAlexander.com. Yes. No plat, no uh, social media platform. Okay, you want social media? So <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. I have a Twitter account, but I'm not handling it. There you go. Because you know these are young millennials. These are millennials so. <laughs> Dr. Stacia Alexander. You can find me when you go on Facebook and Instagram. But I don't do. My kids will not allow me to do. What's the Snapchat? Yeah, I'm not allowed. Oh to no, Snapchat. I, don't, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I think that's just almost for selfies. But oh, definitely, okay, yeah, I'm not allowed. Look, she that. knew y'all was millennials. <laughs> so yes. But and and there's a the thing too. What I can commend millennials on is that they are more receptive to counseling. Yes, they are more receptive than like my age group was. And even like you talked about being on the podcast, what those do is shows you that you're not alone. Hmm. When you actually get on there and you listen to other people, you realize, well, I'm not out here by myself. But when you lay down at night, those thoughts are still there. You still have to process your thoughts. It's like an open computer with a million tabs going on. Mm -hmm. I've heard people use that analogy often and yes. I'm like, that's me. Yes. There's so many things going mm -hmm. on and I wish we would have had more time to even talk about the fact that some millennials, yeah, well most millennials I guess I would say are, but you know, you guys generation kind of seek, um, well I can't say kind of seek, I'll say they'll put the religion in more before they put in what's on earth and what God is already given. Ooh, my generation or millennials? I'm going to say sometime your generation. Yes, yes, I would agree with that. Okay, that's what I was saying. Yes, I do think we were we were trained, if you will, or brought up, conditioned to truly in engage our spiritual side. Mm -hmm. Again, yes, I still think that even... Okay, so let me say this. Going to counseling does not reflect the lack of faith. Exactly. So that's what my generation would think is that if I go to counseling, that means I don't believe in God to heal and provide and do those things that I'm going to the counselor for. But if you were having a heart attack, you would want me to call 911 to get a cardiologist in the room immediately to resuscitate you and save your life. So it's the same thing with a counselor. You can pray about what's going on and you can go to a counselor for that professional help. And I think that's the part that where people actually miss, they have that thin line and they misconstrue what's the actual process and I, I, I didn't want to actually get into that side of it because I know that's a real sensitive subject and mm -hmm. people definitely There's a difference between spirituality and religion and they and rarely think, take it yeah. seriously I think more millennials are spiritual where we were religious I do I think that's the yeah. difference between them. and then not all, not everybody um, you know when you say thank you we're gonna pray for you and you know we don't really know who everybody's praying to right or in this case, you know, who everybody's serving because our guys are not, the, some people's guys are not the same. But that's why I want to stay away from that, that part of it mm -hmm. this time. But um, we, of course, want you guys, I, I just want to keep iterating that, to be able to seek, if you need to, the help for the, the business side, the talent side. It may not even be anything that you're going through with your business or you're being an artist. But like she said, interview, find the right person so you guys can get some help. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to close yeah. out one thing because you, you said if you need to, but here's the thing. Gotcha. Find a counselor before you need a counselor. Before you need before you need a counselor. Do you see what I'm saying? That way when something happens, you're, you're ready to go. I have people that I've been seeing for 12, 15 years. Not that they come every week, but hey, hey, something you know came up. Can I start coming in again? And I may not have seen them for three years. And that's a gift to have that. Mm -hmm. that's Just like you have a family therapist. I mean, a family doctor. You can have a family therapist that everybody knows this is our counselor. And I'll definitely ask this question. What made you want to get into that? I guess I definitely want to, because that's an art in itself. <laughs> that's an art in itself to get into one and two. Because you think, okay, when I, when I think about a therapist, mm -hmm. or I think about anybody that's in, a, even a preacher, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, or a doctor, a mm -hmm. you are already dealing with mm -hmm. your own personal yes. issues in life. Yes. So for you to actually want to take on, because you're wanting to take on mm -hmm. that responsibility of counseling and telling someone else how or, or what they should seek or just helping them talk, what made you want to get into that field? So my, I did have a... A, a broken home, if you will. Okay. My parents loved me. I love my parents, but they were broken people, so we had a broken home. In seventh grade, I sat down on the floor praying, Lord, what's wrong with my family? What I know this is not right. Then I look up, and there's a psychology, family psychology book, which was my, one of my dad's books. He didn't study psychology. It had to have been an elective because he's a computer guy. Okay. But it was a psychology book on the shelf, and I started reading it, learning about dysfunction. 
learning about alcoholism, learning about broken homes. And I was like, so we're not crazy, we're dysfunctional. <laughs> and I was scary word. It's scary word for a lot of people, but once uh, once you are aware, then you are empowered to do something about it. And then it. hopefully you accept. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Don't deny it. Yeah. So once I realized that that was where that was where my heart was, just Oh my gosh, I, I can do this. I, I'm reading for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. Went to college. Yeah. Spent years in college. The books. Yeah. Stories in the books. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing testimony as well as um, the transparency that you shared with us today because I think a lot of people don't realize that you have to be transparent in order to, to get the mm -hmm. effectiveness mm -hmm. of what you guys can do. Right. Just like you do when the doctor, they ask you to write down your questions and everything mm -hmm. before you come in. And, mm -hmm. you know, even in my profession, I'm asking the people, what vision did you have? What did for you actually shoot. see uh -huh. for yourself? Mm -hmm. And so that we can give you exactly what you're wanting mm -hmm. or what your vision may be. Right. right. That's deep. That's amazing. I'm glad that we were able to even talk about that because, like I said, a lot of people, entrepreneurs, artists, um, even if you're like, I keep on want to say that because this is deeper than just having a business and mm -hmm. being an artist. It goes pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you again for coming here to speak with it's us fun. about. Thank <laughs> she you. said it was fun yeah. to speak with us about the mental health, and I hope to not only have you back again, um, but anything that you guys can find and follow her on social media, guys, please, because she stays busy. And shout out your platform for goals have so yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, yeah. Set up. <laughs> so the, the the monthly show that we do is goals don't have goals feelings don't have feelings. and the reason we said that is because it, entrepreneurs creative people you stay up and you realize okay this is what I want to do okay. but then when it gets to Friday you're like I'm, I'm, I just don't feel like it gotcha. but your goal is still there so <laughs> because your goal doesn't have a feeling let's deal with the emotionality of success so that you can keep pushing forward, but you're not denying the true nature of who you are. You're being a whole person. And you're still, you're being truthful. You're being honest, yes, and genuine. That's amazing. What time do you guys come on? They definitely need to be yes, able to catch so you. the first Thursday of every month at 7 p.m., and it is through my Facebook Live uh, Facebook Live page, Goals Don't Have Feelings. Guys, look at, look that up. We're going to definitely have that at, at the bottom of the um, key so you guys can okay. look it up and follow Dr. Stacia. I'm blessed to have known, to still know her and even bring her to you guys. So take advantage, take advantage, take advantage. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to miss an opportunity for you to yeah. present your stuff, your stuff as well. So please, guys, rewind. You're welcome. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Go back some, a couple of minutes so you guys can see the excellence and what we just presented and what she just said to you guys. At Geek Plus, you always know that we're thinking for an innovating life, and we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you again.